Good evening, my name is Hugh Grant and this is The Graham Norton Show. <laughs> show for you tonight. I tell you, my sofa's attracted more celebrities than a dodgy offshore tax scheme. <laughs> and <laughs> ever talk about the Paradise Papers? There have even been investigations into the royal family's financial affairs. Yeah. I mean, you know it's bad when they start probing the Queen's loophole. Yeah. <laughs> and now, the papers also suggest Prince Charles has money put away offshore. Now, Charles hasn't been able to respond as he's currently out of the country visiting his money. <laughs> is he wearing a mankini? What is that? <laughs> uh, now, in political news, Minister for International Development Priti Patel hasn't had the best of weeks. Uh, no, on Wednesday, she flew back from Africa for a meeting with Theresa May and was met at the airport by a taxi driver, you know, holding up one of those signs. Yeah? <laughs> Luckily, though, all these ministerial sackies aren't bothering Theresa May. No, she's just carrying on with today's cabinet meeting as usual. <laughs> <laughs> and finally, Donald Trump has been visiting Asia this week, mm, whether they like it or not. <laughs> Turns out, not. Uh, <laughs> South Korean protesters have taken to trolling uh, Trump on Twitter. Although, interesting, if you Google the words troll and Trump, you seriously get this. Yeah. <laughs> Christmas. <laughs> Mind you, this is amazing. You may see that this is not the only likeness of Trump that's been <laughs> spotted this week. A woman in Tyneside noticed Donald Trump's face inside her dog's ear. <laughs> <laughs> ear hole, arsehole, you decide. Uh, let's get to your song. <laughs> Later, we'll have music and chat from singing sensation Kelly Clarkson. Yeah. She's going to be performing her new single, Love. But first, she's one of the UK's top comedians and now she's turned author with her new book, How to Be Champion. Please welcome back Sarah Milligan! <laughs> oh. Hello! Let me greet you. How are you, darling? What are we going to see you, Sarah Milligan, everybody? <laughs> He's gone from Cold Robo in Game of Thrones to Aquaman in Justice League. It's a first time welcome to Mr. Jason Momoa! <laughs> to Notting Hill, Love Actually, Bridget Jones. He's become one of our most beloved stars. Now playing a scene-stealing villain in Paddington 2, it's always a pleasure to welcome the great Hugh Grant! <laughs> You know, often people come in from superhero movies and they just look like actors, but you, you, you're it. How tall are you? Uh, I think 6'5". Six 6'5". Five. Six five. Five, yeah. Wow. That's it's a... funny because my dad's like 5'9 and my, my mom's 5'8", so I don't know where... Where did you come from then? Nowhere. <laughs> Quest guy. Oh. Questions were asked. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, now, Sarah Milliken, uh, very lovely to have you here. Thanks. And obviously, I'm sure you enjoy Jason Momoa's work. Mm. But you are, I know, a fan of Mr. Grant. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. No. Yes. Oh, You're so nice, but, oh, but not lots not? of people hate me. <laughs> <laughs> My son hates me. <laughs> yeah, he came to see Paddington 2 the other day, and uh, all he said throughout the whole film is, why is Daddy in it so much? <laughs> <laughs> My favourite is Sense and Sensibility. Ah. I love it. Oh, my God. I watch it sort of... Week is weekly bad? <laughs> <laughs> no, you know, I, you I don't watch, watch it weekly too. <laughs> <laughs> I really watch it that often. I, it's one of my... It's a comfort film, let's call it that. 
I have three. Do you want to know what the other ones are? Yes, very much. Um, so it's Sense and Sensibility, um, Muppet Christmas Carol, <laughs> regardless of what time of year. Yeah. And San Andreas, uh, which is a disaster film with The Rock. <laughs> <laughs> so it's quite a good mix of things. Yeah, yeah. mix it up. Yeah. Uh, now, uh, Jason, you, you've only just got to Britain. Yeah, I've been here for probably a week. Oh, OK. But you seem to like it here. You, you go out and about. Yes. Yes. I'm known for my shenanigans. Yes. Do you want to see her? Um, uh, because we spotted you around London with your widow from uh, Game of Thrones. Yes. Uh, Amelia Clark. She posted this picture of the two of you. Oh, um, oh, nice picture. Now, when was it? Was this last week? Uh, that was like three days ago. I just actually flew over to Belfast. Uh, I got back from Belfast right now. Oh, okay, so Belfast in November. Why are you wearing a vest? <laughs> <laughs> is, it, is it because he looks like this? I'm right, I'm right, I'm right, yeah. <laughs> this is the first time I've ever wore a turtleneck. Oh, really? my, my mother's gonna be very proud of me. But I'm gonna be. It's gonna be close for peeling this off and getting the getting the. I'm, uh, the I'm fine with it. I burn hot. I Don't burn let hot. us stop yeah. you. Let's do the whole show topless. <laughs> yeah, let's all go topless. Come on. <laughs> but, now, but fans must go crazy when they see the two of you together. I go crazy when I see her. I do they mean, want you to start talking in... Uh, is it Dothraki? Dothraki, yeah. Do, yeah. They, it's all oh, nonsense, but you do speak some Dothraki. I, I, I've been known to, yeah, say a few things. Go on, then. Do you want... <laughs> For the ladies. Okay. <laughs> sorry, I know I love you, but sorry. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> and for the gentleman? Oh, yes. Excuse me. <laughs> oh, he's got so much more to say to me. <laughs> and listen, first film we're going to talk about tonight is uh, Hugh Grant starring in Paddington 2. It opens tonight, and I loved the first one. So I think people are kind of worried about this, but honestly, it's as good, if not better. And you are brilliant in it, Hugh Grant. Uh, who do you play? Well, I. It's, it's, it, I got a letter with a script saying uh, we've, we've, we're making Paddington 2 and there's this part of an extremely self-obsessed ex-famous actor now fallen on hard times. <laughs> well, I was a fraction hurt. <laughs> <laughs> but um, it, it was a very funny script and, it's, and in, in a way it was therapeutic. I, the, I have deep reservoirs of... <laughs> actually narcissism and neurosis and <laughs> anger and hatred of others to, to <laughs> that I was able to tap. Did you base it on specific actors? Well, as I say, a lot of it came from me, uh, <laughs> in, in a way, a sort of self-portrait. But there were, there were actors from my past. Uh, in the 80s, I did theatre. And uh, <laughs> uh, remember that. I remember that. <laughs> there were some, no, I mean, there were some brilliant characters. There was a wonderful old boy in the theatre who... Uh, he was so good and... and you know, you, you'd be the show would start at eight, but at three p.m. from his dressing room, you'd start to hear nimini 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 <laughs> ma ma scrunchy mouse loud lion <laughs> <laughs> loud lion. Uh, and he, and he, as a result, had a wonderful voice, and he, he was just he was marvelously smooth and marv seamlessly pervy. He used to. Uh, <laughs> I was sharing a dressing room with another young actor, and he, he always used to knock on our door before a show, pretending it was to say good luck, but actually it was to see us in our pants. And... <laughs> <laughs> different times. <laughs> different times. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, in Paddington 2... <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, cos you are Phoenix... Uh, Buchanan. Buchanan. Yeah. And you are the little bear's nemesis. That's right, yeah. There's, uh, he's living a happy life now with the Browns and wherever it is in London, Notting Hill. And um, <laughs> one of his neighbours is uh, this uh, used to be famous theatre actor called Phoenix Buchanan. And uh, it, uh, well, it, they, they end up wanting the same thing in life. They want this pop up book, which turns out to be a, a treasure map. And uh, it ends up with me basically putting him in prison, trying to kill him. Um, sounds very dark. Uh, <laughs> okay, let's, oh, go, 
but putting the, him in prison. But there are dark bits. Yeah, there are dark yeah. bits. Yeah. But it's all been very confusing for me because the, the Paddington Bear is voiced by Ben Whishaw, who I'm also working with at the moment uh, in a thing about Jeremy Thorpe. He's playing Norman Scott, my lover. So I've spent all year trying to either kill, imprison or bugger Ben Whishaw. <laughs> The children cry. <laughs> <laughs> Shall we look at a clip? Have I done a bad job of selling the film? No, you haven't. It's really a sunny, lovely film. It is. No, but in all seriousness. <laughs> because I hate my films normally. I, you know, I can't bear to watch them, but I will say. Uh, I can't find a flaw in this one. It's really good. It is so good. Yeah. It is so good. Yeah, I'm very, very proud of it. Yeah, you should be. That's uh, better. This is a little... Very good. Yeah. This, is a, this, this, is a, this is a charming clip of, uh, of your character meeting the little bear for the first time. So, I'm going to ask one of you to come up here and open the fair. Volunteers! Anyone? Meenie, meenie, meenie. Bear. Oh, let's have the young bear. Wine pot. Come, come, young Ursine. You. Up here, my furry friend. Very good, very good. Now, your name is? Paddington Brown. Oh, well, of course it is. You are my new neighbour. You live with Henry and Mary and the great Mrs... <laughs> now then, I suppose you know who I am. Oh, yes. You're a very famous actor. Oh, poo. <laughs> or used to be. Now you do dog food commercials. Well, a man has to eat. What? Dog food? <laughs> <laughs> oh, very, very funny. <laughs> I can't remember. Uh, have you done this before in another film, well, having to act with sort of... No, I think children have gone to bed. Hopefully they have by now. Um, <laughs> but, um, the, the, you know, obviously the bear's not there. So have you done that Sorry, acting what? before? <laughs> Don't listen. Don't listen. <laughs> well, I must say my 89-year-old father came to the premiere the other day and he did say to me halfway through the film, I don't, is that a real bear? <laughs> <laughs> Dad, it talks. You know. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it is very lifelike, so I suppose. Yeah. <laughs> But what, like, what was there? Was there anything there when you were doing that scene? Uh, well, no, there, sometimes there's a stick. Uh, sometimes uh, there's a wonderful, uh, very short actress. Uh, and sometimes, most frightening of all, there's a bear's head on a stick. <laughs> it looks like a kind of warning to bears. <laughs> yeah. And in this film, because, you know, you kind of think, I, I like children's films, but your range... Your range in this film, the <clears throat> accents, the, the, the makeup, it's a proper kind of tour de force. Uh, well, I, yes, a lot of characters. A lot yes, of characters. We, we, they've really stilled of some of them. Yeah. There you are as a kind of a uh, homeless man. Well, then, yeah, Magwitch from uh, Great Expectation. Oh, OK. Yeah. Uh, then here you are as a, a train conductor. Yes. Uh, <laughs> terrifying. <laughs> yes. Uh, and then perhaps most touching and beautiful of all, uh, there you are. Uh, <laughs> Were you very involved in the creating the looks? Uh, fairly involved. Well, what, what the big surprise is you never know which costume is going to get you going. Um, <laughs> maybe that's age as well, but I, something about being a nun was slightly arousing. In a very <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 yeah, I had to, to wear handcuffs in, in the Jeremy Thorpe thing the other day, and I thought, hello. <laughs> <laughs> no. uh, oh, still life to be lived. Yeah. Um, uh, because Jason Momoa, the characters you play have been so iconic. <coughs> uh, people like to dress up as them. So we've got we've got a picture of uh, this is you and Amelia as the Drogos, and you know, that's from the thing. The Drogos. Uh, <laughs> well, you're Mr. and Mrs. Drogo, aren't yes, you? Yes, yes, yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> they were lovely. The Drogos. I didn't yeah. heard them. Yeah. <laughs> you know the Drogos, the, the, the Drogos. Little dragons. They're coming over tonight. The Drogos. <laughs> <laughs> I hope they don't bring that bloody dragon. <laughs> uh, uh, so that is that's. Actual Game of Thrones with professional makeup and, and the costumes and everything. And I, so bear in mind, that's the real thing. This is just uh, a couple at home who've tried to recreate this. It's pretty amazing. <laughs> 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 The attention 
to details. Marvellous, isn't it? <laughs> I particularly like what they've done with the room. Uh, <laughs> oh, dear. Uh, right. Uh, Jason Momoa's film tonight is Justice League, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, yes, I know. People have been waiting for Justice League. It opens next Friday. And uh, this is a DC Comics kind of the super group. And this is your first kind of real go at being Aquaman. We have sort of seen you. Yeah, we no, we haven't. Uh, so it's we'll see if people like it. You know yeah. I mean? I'm pretty well, excited. Well, they're all there. There's the, the Flash, Wonder Woman, Batman, Cyborg, and uh, you, Aquaman. And why? Why, Aquaman? Why have you all been joined together in this way? The, the world, is, as we know it, is going to end. No! Yes. <laughs> I just, I hate to break the news to you, but... Uh, me and my friends kind of save you. <laughs> We're so grateful. <laughs> and uh, obviously, you know, in terms of the superpowers, because obviously you're all superheroes and you've got superpowers, so Aquaman, uh, water-based, could breathe onto water, presumably. Yes. But uh, what else can he do? He can command the ocean, so uh, he can, you know, I, can, I basically talk to fish. You know? <laughs> if you wanted me to, I don't know, make you sushi, I could do that. And, like, do it, if you're like right next to the water, I could be like, boom, put the plant, hand Is up. that a superhero <laughs> quality? It sounds, like, it sounds like Jonestown for fish. <laughs> yeah, he's got super strength. And, uh... That's good, that's good. Uh, bulletproof. That's oh, nice. Why, why would you put bulletproof third after come <laughs> make sushi super quickly? <laughs> yeah. and, to reorder. And you've got your... Uh, hang on, it's a... a, a, a it's Quindent. A, Quindent. 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 It's not the trident yet. We don't get the trident until a little bit later. Yeah. Next movie. So, and, and I think the Quindent is step back there. You, this, is this the Here real Quindent wow. from the movie? Oh. Good reaction to a fork. Well done. <laughs> <laughs> no. Well, this one, a... this one's a nice light one. Oh, I see. I could do that. Yeah. <laughs> Aqua woman. <laughs> <laughs> I could make sushi quicker. But do you do? <laughs> can, I, can I do something with this? Yeah, go on. Go don't, on. don't hurt anybody. Listen. I, 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 I do break a lot of these. Okay. I mean, I do break a lot of them, but. Oh, 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 oh. Is it still in one piece? Here we go. Still in one piece. Let's see if we can get around. Hiya. Oh. We've got to get because it's a Batman is sort of putting together the Justice League. Yes, Batman and Wonder Woman. Um, you know, Batman's not known for playing well with others, and obviously the world's in peril. Wonder Woman helps get uh, you know these uh, these other otherworldly with you know characters with superpowers to save the world and come together to you know to save it. Yeah. All right. Well, this is uh, Batman uh, trying to get you uh, involved. So let me get this straight. You do a dress like a bat, like a like an actual bat. Worked for 20 years in Gotham. The fight comes, we'll need you. Don't count on a Batman. Why not? Because I don't like you coming here, digging into my business, getting into my life. People from Atlanta tell me to do this, now you say do that. I want to be left alone. That way you help these people out here in the middle of nowhere, because you can just leave? I help them because no one else does. If you want to protect them, you need to work with me. Strong man as strong as alone. You ever heard that? That's not a saying. That's the opposite of what the saying is. Yeah. This doesn't mean I'm wrong. You ever hear of Superman? He died fighting next to me. My point exactly. What's well, in the three boxes? It's ancient history. What is it? Mankind's melting the polar ice caps, destroying the ecosystem. They got it coming. Hey, I don't mind if the ocean dries. How about if they boil? Dress like a bat. You're out of your mind, Bruce Wayne. Ooh. Good. Yeah. Now, that's that's your actual Iceland. That's that's Iceland. Now, so that's cold. That water. Yeah, that was cold. So, I think, so, so you, it doesn't look like it, but it was it was cold. No, you do look very relaxed. But uh, but apparently you were wearing were you wearing a thermally thing? <laughs> yeah, you know, because I was out there for a while, so they have like a very thin wetsuit that you put on, so you don't freeze to death. Okay, well that's good. Yes. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> It's funny because I actually went out. I was, I was, they had a nice crane shot. They went out there in front of me, and I was walking out. But you know, if you have a wetsuit on, the air gets kind of trapped in there. Mm. 
and he's walking out and the bubbles start coming up and right when it gets to the level where it's at, all these bubbles come out. <laughs> <laughs> and like, like you fart, you know? And, and the camera's right there and I'm like, I start giggling because of the, because of the, the bubbles because they can feel them go up too. And then I open it up to let the air out and then all oh, the cold went in. <laughs> so my reaction was all like, <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> Many emotions went through me in that, in that And not to dwell on this picture too much, but, um... <laughs> the, the, some of these tattoos are real, so... Well, yeah, it was, uh, Zach had the idea he wanted to put my tattoo, is on my family, like, my family crest, and, uh, he wanted to, you know, put it everywhere. Oh, okay. So these are just, what, are they... they yeah, well, it, they're, uh, they're like stickers. It, it takes quite a bit. I mean, it's about an hour and a half makeup in the morning just to put them all on, but there's like 20 odd pieces that, that they have to put on, and it takes about, it takes a long time to get them off. It was the same in Sense and Sensibility. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now, uh, recently, you celebrated your birthday on the set of, so there's a, you've already finished the standalone you, Aquaman Yeah, we j two weeks ago, I just finished Aquaman. Yeah, wow. in Australia. Uh, so that's in Australia. And here you all are celebrating your birthday. So this is your family. I mean, not all of them. Just, I think the ones at the front of your family. Yes. Uh, <laughs> my babies. Yeah, that's Wolf and Lola. And then... But no, because you live on a, you live on a, is it a ranch or? Yeah, yeah, we got uh, uh, around five acres, five, six acres up in, uh, in the, in, in, in California. And, Bunch of animals and yeah. Nice. We, we, it's kind of nice up there too because there's no service, so we don't have. Fortunately, we don't have a lot of TV, so they don't get to see much. But they just they got to see the movie lately, which was phenomenal because I, I I've never been able to show my kid. They've never even seen Wizard of Oz, so I was a little worried like coming into it to show them Justice League, and uh, <laughs> but it was it was amazing because I mean, my kids can't watch anything that I'm in. I mean, but, but that my, was... my grandmother can't watch anything. I mean, my family, <laughs> I don't even know how I'm like, don't watch that one. You're, you're going to want to skip that one. Eventually, I'll be able to do something you can watch. And it was really amazing to be able to watch. Something. But at least they could if they wanted to. I mean, if they, they might want to. But mine don't even want to watch me. <laughs> I beg them to. <laughs> They're sitting there watching dino trucks. I say, no, what about one of daddy's films? <laughs> Shove in, you know. I've done some lovely films, like the Pirates cartoon. Really you can't get funnier or nicer than that. And I yeah. shove it in the DVD, and there's tears and tantrums. <laughs> We're back to Dino Trucks. In, in five... I have to say, Dino Trucks is pretty good. <laughs> yeah. In terms of being a parent, though, uh, Sarah Milligan, you decided quite early. Uh, this was not for you. Yeah, I don't like kids. No offence. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure yours are lovely, but I'm glad they're not here. Um, <laughs> no interest at all. Um, I, yeah, I was on holiday. So we went on two holidays abroad when I was a kid. One at uh, Malta when I was four and Spain when I was eight. And when we were in Spain when I was eight, I was, um, uh, my present I got on holiday was a baby doll, but it was like this. It was giant. <laughs> and I remember having an inkling then, what, like, what childbirth was. Like, I knew that it came out of the part of a woman, and I thought, no. <laughs> I knew there was no hole on me that would ever manage that. <laughs> and the fun thing about the baby doll was that it had, a, it had a dummy. You took the dummy out, the baby cried, put the dummy back in, baby stopped crying. Brilliant. Uh, one, this one particular night, um, you know, people, women often think that the day they became a woman was the day that their period started. Not for me. Um, on this one night, we lost the dummy, so the baby was constantly crying. <laughs> <laughs> and I was bitten on the nipple by a mosquito. <laughs> and it grew an actual boob. <laughs> <laughs> so I think that's the night I became a woman. <laughs> But I wore a bra and my baby would not shut the door. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hey everyone, Sarah Millican has written a book. Yes, she has. <laughs> and a really successful book. Uh, How to be champion. It's uh, you were number one in the in the Sunday Times best selling list, which must be such a thrill. It was ridiculous. Yeah. I, I, I don't know why it was, but I'm really pleased it was. <laughs> yeah, well, of course. And it's a memoir. It is the story of your life. Yes. But it also contains advice. I mean, and, and some of it's funny advice, but some of it's real advice. Yeah. Well, I decided it, there's something really arrogant.
arrogant about writing an autobiography because you just think it's really odd to say to people, well, I'm assuming you all want to know all about me. And people are, not really. Um, <laughs> so I decided, I wondered, because I'm quite practical and I like to sort of fix things. Uh, if I have problems, I like to work out how to make them better. And I thought, well, I wonder if some of the things that have helped me might help other people. And it's interesting because some of the people that have sent me messages um, that have read it and enjoyed it, which is great, um, have, like, skipped the divorce chapter because they're happily married. Um, <laughs> on the shelf and they dig that back out in a few years time. It's a keeper. Yeah, it's, it's like a reference book maybe. Yeah. And I don't want to misrepresent the book in any way because it is a really funny book and there's lots of really great stories. But you also I I sort of came away with the impression of someone who uh, struggles a bit with some of the aspects of your success and mm. of your fame. Yeah, I'm quite shy generally. So why that does people don't really understand why how you could stand in front of an audience and be shy, but it's because there's a gap <laughs> on the <a> stage <laughs> and they're over there and they're all listening and looking at me, which is what I like. Um, but like I can't I don't go to parties, that sort of thing. But what I find is the kind of oddness of I suppose social media is a major difference, maybe that was different before social media, in that you can be kind of attacked uh, on social media or even just like, I had this man once just send me a message saying, I've just watched you put your bin out. <laughs> Which is not a euphemism. <laughs> um, it's just my bin. But that, that's the sort of thing that was quite scary to see that. And no, that's, nothing, that is scary. Yeah, it's not threatening, but it was still a bit like, did he see that I didn't put all the recycling in the recycling bin? <laughs> <laughs> um, and it's that sort of, that kind of, when you're quite a private person, it's that sort of, I find that quite jarring a little bit. Not being able to turn it off. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And not being able to, you know, put your bin out just in your pants if you want to. Yeah. <laughs> like, uh, fully dressed. Because you, Rod, I have to say, you have been, I think, really brave in the way that you've taken on the press. Because I feel with the press you'll win battles, but in the end they may win the war. I mean, are you worried they're just going to crush you, just find something to finally finish you off with? <laughs> Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Very much. Well, I mean, look, I, I think they've got every skeleton in my cupboard. There's a lot, um, yes. but I think I think they've had them all now. Mm. Woohoo! No, no, it's. Uh, yeah, but, I mean, this is one can't you can't take that line really because our lives are lovely. They're they're basically lovely. Yeah. It's just a, it's when people around you, you know, your family, your innocent family, your 89 year old dad gets woken up in the middle of the, the night and asks questions. That's when you get angry. Um, but I, we're, we're, we're all right. We're, we're all right. No, we're, we're, we're rich. We're also, we also, I think it's the people who have... <laughs> but, it's, but I think it's also the people who have no recourse. You know, it's... Because, yeah, you know, we, we, have, we have voices and loud voices. Yeah. Well, that's it exactly is people it. who, you know, live in a street in a town and they end up in the papers and they've got no way of... Well, and these are the people... My, my campaign hacked off is entirely those people. It's people who've lost children in, a, in road accidents and then been, had their privacy invaded by, by national newspapers. It's, it's all them and it's not... A celebrity, oh, poor me, organisation. OK. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Very good. Uh, now, uh, Jason, because you have this incredibly strong look, you know... It's the forehead. Yeah, yeah. no, but it's, it's everything. It's the a, caveman it's, forehead. Yeah, it's a look, but you do take your acting very seriously. You know, you approach each role. And, was it Conan that you were quite method for Conan? Uh, yeah, I had some stupid idea to... Uh, you know, you, you idolize actors when, when I was growing up, and Marlon Brando was obviously a huge one. And I heard Streetcar, like, he got punched in the nose, and it made, so he could change his face. And, <clears throat> yeah, I asked a buddy to punch me in the face, and I never had my nose broken, and it, you know, broke me straight on. But in, in Conan, there's a gigantic bump hook in there, and my wife was so pissed. <laughs> I hope I don't have a friend who would do that for me. Uh... <laughs> Because, now, you, you've been in so many films, very experienced for the camera, but in, in real life, didn't you pretend to be your own agent? I did. Uh, I, I've never <laughs> been very good with being agented or with, with agents, and I fired them left, right and centre. I fired one poor man who was a brilliant agent just because I saw his anus. Um, <laughs> he, <laughs> he, <laughs> Not just 10% of it. <laughs> 
It was, uh, it was ridiculous. He, he, we were at some film festival and he, he, his shower broke down. He wanted to borrow my bath in my suite. And I said, all right. And I forgot he was in there. And I walked in and he was on all fours washing. Who washes like that? <laughs> I've never heard of such a thing. And anyway, the view was awful. It was, uh, <laughs> it was, I, well, I don't understand. He was on all fours. Yes, and his bottom and... towards me, this awful, soapy <laughs> flag of Japan. <laughs> I have to say that you're a great agent. I'm really, very really fond of you, but I, I've seen your anus and you've got to go. <laughs> so I, I, uh, yeah, I did then invent an agent for three or four years uh, called James Howeely, which was very... It saved a lot of money. You know, people would send, an e uh, send me a script and James Howeely would say, thank you so much for submitting the script. I'll get it to Hugh as soon as possible and get back to you. But I, I got caught out in the end because I used to, you know, do these emails a bit drunk and I... You know, to say Hugh's read the script and he's, he, he really enjoys it. He'd like to meet, meet up. Uh, best wishes, Hugh. <laughs> <laughs> and then they rang one time, and I, you know, I, I thought, I haven't got a voice for James Howley. Really. <laughs> and for some reason, I panicked and I, and I went with genteel Edinburgh old lady. <laughs> It was pretty much Janet from Dr. Finley's case. <laughs> oh, well, hello now. Should we have a week of tea then? That was ludicrous and unconvincing. Yeah. On, the, on the anus front, um, <laughs> yeah. I was recently... I woke up the other day and I was uh, lying on the bed and I've got a little dog, a little rescue dog, adorable thing, and he was lying on one of my boobs, which is tricky when they're in a bra, but very easy when they're not. Uh, <laughs> sort of a comfy cushion. And he pushed himself off the boob uh, pushed himself and it really hurt, so I made a noise, a noise of pain. And at the same time, unbeknownst to me, my husband was bent over picking up a sock off the floor, <laughs> fully naked, with his anus in a much the same situation, <laughs> spreading my face. And the noise that I made, he thought I was making that noise because of what I just said. <laughs> <laughs> and the noise I made was this. Oh! <laughs> I've been with you for 13 years. I love you very dearly. I would never make a noise <laughs> upon seeing any part of you. I might do a face. <laughs> I might do a little wretch. Uh, a little... <laughs> but it would be entirely inaudible. <laughs> Nothing too much. Oh. <laughs> and, uh, Sarah Bidicott, very quickly, you are also back on tour. Control yes. enthusiast. It's 130 dates. Yeah, it's sort of wow. a year. It's sort of... I have little gaps here, so yeah. I don't go mad, and I get to remind myself what my husband looks like. Um, his face, hopefully not the rest of him. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just his anus. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Who knew I had an anus story? <laughs> it's good to know. Uh, Jason. <laughs> 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 uh, right, it's uh, time for our musical guest tonight. This artist rose to fame as the first winner of American Idol. Uh, since then, she has sold over 20 five million albums and won three Grammys. Now she's back with a brand new album, here performing Love So Soft. It is Kelly Clarkson! <laughs>
hook, now you're caught up. Love so strong, so strong. Love so strong. If you want this love, gotta hold it tight. Never let it go, baby. Let it give you life. If you want this love, gotta hold it tight. Never let it go, baby. Let it give you life. to drink. Yes. <laughs> Greatest. <laughs> uh, now, the new album, it's called Meaning of Life. It's out now. There yes, it is. Yes, just came and, out. Uh, and that song is obviously on it. Yes. Um, now, here's the... This is... I was uh, amazed by this fact. So you win American Idol 15 years ago. Mm -hmm. This is your first album beyond that contract. Yes. <gasps> Yeah. That's insane. Nuts. I know. I know. You know, it's, it was successful, though. You know, we had a very successful arranged marriage. So, yeah. But I mean, I was on a competition. You sent a contract. You. Yeah. It changes your life. There are pros and cons. So, but, yeah. But, but so. You, you sold 25 million albums. You won yeah. all those Grammys. Doesn't that give you a bit of kind of, I can win a fight now? Well, it gives me, that's not even my best work. That's why I feel so excited about this album. You know what I'm saying? Like, this album is, like, so much better than those. And I love those. I love singing them. I don't have a problem. I love all my hits that I've had. I'm not that person you, that's you over it. You're keeping all your good ideas back for after the 50s. No, I wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, restrained. Like a drawer of amazing yeah. songs. Yeah. Here they are. No, it's just people would always be like, are you nervous about this record? You know, every time I'd have a new record out, I'm like, no, because I haven't really... I don't, I don't, and I hadn't felt like I'd done my best yet. Like, my, I hadn't been able to really nail a record how I wanted to. And, and Atlantic Records was amazing to work with. And this is a, a proud musical footprint for me, so. And great that after 15 years, you get to feel like that. You get to feel yeah, like, like, right, now, now let's artist. get started. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, no, it is. And it's cool, too, because I think 15 years into any career, um, whatever your vocation is, I think um, it's exciting to have something fresh going on, you know? Also, you're so, a very different person than you were 15 years ago. Yeah, oh, my... I mean, I don't know about y'all, but I hate my 20-year-old self. Like, all my 20s, I'm like, she's annoying. Like, <laughs> she's annoying. She was very egocentric and dramatic, and I'm still a bit dramatic. But, um, no, I just, I don't know. I feel like um, my life, especially having children, you know, we have four kids. It's a lot of um, selflessness. So, um, I don't know. I think perspective kind of changes your world. Now, the last, I think it was the last time you were here, uh, Kelly brought her daughter. I did, uh, River. She was young, yeah. And, and the happiest... Baby, I have ever encountered. I mean, yeah, and now miserable. Um, she's a teenager, <laughs> and she's super happy, and then all of a sudden, just like super not. Yeah, it's really fun. But isn't that? The, <laughs> but, <laughs> but she likes. You didn't mean the word fun, mate. Yeah, yeah. It's like you know, take the wine in a bathroom and cry it out with God. Because <laughs> then you're like, I don't want to kill her. <laughs> I still love she, you. She's super great, though. Sometimes she's like this little unicorn. Sometimes she's very magical, very um, infectious in a good way. And but nearly that extinct. Thing, <laughs> yeah. And then it's fictional. It was never a thing. No. Yeah. <laughs> extinct. Am I wrong? Am I wrong? <laughs> no, I don't think. Is it a real bear? <laughs> 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 but isn't 
got the song, Love Says Off, that she likes. That, that's well, what... she does, but she can't say her Fs yet. So it sounds like her mother's an alcoholic because she says, love so sauced, you know? <laughs> <laughs> we have a very drunken love in our household. Because she just can't say her Fs. So it's kind of fun to hear her sing all the songs. Well, but... you did very well tonight. Thank you so much for singing that. Congratulations on the album. Kenny Clarkson, everybody. But before we go, it's time for a visit to the big red chair. Who is there? Hello. Hi. Uh, who are you? I'm John. John. Lovely. And where are you from, John? Uh, I live in London, originally from Northern Ireland. Oh, Northern Ireland. <laughs> uh, <laughs> where, whereabouts in Northern Ireland? In uh, Bangor, just outside Belfast oh, in Northern Ireland. Bangor's lovely. Bangor. It's a lovely seaside resort. Lovely. Oh, yes. yes. Uh, so, but you live here now? I do. And uh, what do you do here? Uh, I try to make it easier for people with disabilities to bank. To, to what? To bank. <laughs> My career guidance officer <laughs> never suggested that to me. <laughs> Wait, we're here. Sorry, now. <laughs> Off you go, sir. So uh, I got up one morning as usual, uh, getting myself ready to go to work. And from the, from getting out of bed and the 20 feet or so to get to the bathroom, I was ex in excruciating pain uh, around the the rectal region. Uh, what? Yeah, it's indeed. I get it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know what it is. But... Uh, and then... Dr. Clarkson's very concerned. <laughs> uh, I don't think you should go to the ER at that point. Well, I, I did go to the doctors, got seen straight away. Uh, he says, right, can you remove your trousers and underwear and lie down and uh, think happy thoughts? So he rummaged about and uh, he oh then he, uh, oh he asked me a question. Um, Do you like asparagus? Uh, and pulled out a uh, asparagus tip from my uh, anus. Uh, <laughs> bizarrely, I had not eaten asparagus for months. What? So I had no idea what it was. on a postcard. <laughs> what the hell was that about? It comes on national television and talks about anuses, like. It would be harder to, yeah, to get in and then get out, because they're sort of weird at the top, aren't they? I don't, I don't know. Oh, <laughs> but also, did someone something? break into his house and insert some asparagus in <laughs> Was it Because if it was cooked, surely that wouldn't hurt you, would it? I didn't understand. I no? Think we've, yeah, we've got questions. You shouldn't have tipped Get him out here. <laughs> <laughs> One more, one more. This is this one. OK, here we go. Hello. Hello. Hi, what's your name? I'm Jane. Jane, lovely Jane. Where are you from? I'm from Marlow in Buckinghamshire. Oh, lovely, full address. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and, and what, what do you do? Uh, I'm retired now, but I was a, a practice manager in a health centre. Oh, OK. <laughs> Medically based. Maybe she can explain the asparagus. <laughs> 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 uh, <laughs> no one can explain the asparagus. <laughs> Twitter's going to go crazy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, off you go with the story, Jane. OK, so um, I'm a woman, woman of a certain age and I got to a menopause state where, you know, things were going wrong with my body, etc. So I happened to mention it to a friend that I was not, um, you know, I was not coping particularly well and she said, oh, I've got a great gadget for you. She said, it's a magnet. So she gave me this magnet and she said, you just put it in your pants. It was about the size of a two-pound coin. Did it vibrate? Like, what are we, where are we going with this? <laughs> <laughs> You <laughs> <laughs> can breathe underwater. <laughs> oh <my God>. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry, we've interrupted. So you've got a magnet in your pants. <laughs> and I toddle up to work and I and I get into the office and there's all these metal filing cabinets in the office. So I thought, oh, I wonder. 
So I lurched myself forward at one of the metal cabinets and attached myself to the cabinet, <laughs> to the hilarity of all the friends, you know, my, my office colleagues. And then my boss came in to try and find out, you know, what the noise was. And of course, there I was attached to a, a filing cabinet with my pants. <laughs> That's my story. <laughs> oh my God. It's a trigger finger. Oh, you wanted to save the nice lady. I, yeah, I like the story very much. Did you? <laughs> I find you harsh. <laughs> Join us on the show and have a go. You can sign up if I went up this very best. That is it for tonight. Please say thank you to my guest, Jason Momoa. <laughs> Kenny Clarkson. <laughs> Sarah Millicom. <laughs> and Mr. Hugh Grant. <laughs> and next week is Children in Need, so we'll see you the Friday after that with uh, pop star Kesha, actor John Lithgow, Strictly Judge Shirley Ballas, the hilarious Will Ferrell, the always entertaining Mark Wahlberg, and for the first time, Oscar winner Mel Gibson. I'll see you then. Good night, everybody. Bye. Next on BBC One, a quiet night in doesn't quite go to plan for Josh.